I'm uh, interested in your response to the Donald's uh, comment that you and uh, uh, President Obama created ISIS. <laughs> I've adopted a New Year's resolution. I'm going to let him live in his alternative reality, and I'm not going to respond. Oh, that is so wonderfully clever from the smartest woman in the world. Uh, welcome back, Steve Malzberg Show. Larry Klayman, founder of Freedom Watch, former federal prosecutor, joins us. All right, Larry, so you, here's the progression of this whole thing. First, we had uh, Hillary ac accusing Donald Trump of being a sexist. Donald Trump said, be very careful. She didn't stop. He started bringing up Bill Clinton and bringing up the women, and the women have started coming forward. And then Hillary gave a, a, a campaign rally uh, over the last weekend, and Donald Trump the next day spoke and said, guess what? She didn't even mention me. And now this is her response to not, not a sexism claim by Trump against Hillary or Bill, but even on ISIS, she's not going to respond. Is this a, a, the, the new strategy? Is this a total backing off? of Hillary either attacking Trump or responding to Trump? If anyone, Steve, is living in an alternative reality, it's Hillary Clinton. In fact, Donald Trump hasn't even yet used all the ammunition that he could use. As you know, I represented nearly all of the women that Bill Clinton had allegedly harassed or allegedly raped, the last one being Juanita Broderick during the 1990s. And it was Hillary Clinton, along with George Stephanopoulos and James Carville, I wound up suing them, who had a war room which was intended to destroy these women because Hillary Clinton knew that if, his, if her husband was thrown out of office, her chances of being president would be slim to none. And Trump can use this, is that it's not even an issue of Bill Clinton's conduct sexually in the Oval Office. It's a question of Hillary Clinton destroying women and having no respect for them and shying away from her own alter alternative reality, I might add alternative lifestyle. But, but, yeah. but, but is, this, is this, do you think, uh, I had a guest uh, the other day, uh, uh, it was uh, Daniel Henninger, the Wall Street Journal, who said that Donald Trump has effectively kneecapped Hillary's uh, war on women uh, claims. Well, he's kneecapped it, but he could certainly decimate it. He could put her under for the count by discussing and getting into the facts, and the facts are out there, that she actually hired private investigators, Terry Lenzner, Anthony Pelicano, and others, to harass these women, to go up to them, to, in effect, threaten their children, to break into their homes. He had them audited by the IRS, and she was behind it. She was the one who was using the presidency of Bill Clinton to do that as the consigliere, as they say in Italian. Right, I, want, I want you to also hear, I want you to also uh, hear this next clip and watch it. Here we go. Where is she? I didn't hear that. That's terrible. Terrible. <laughs> you should never say that. That's terrible. They said she's in the bathroom. That's a terrible thing. I'm admonishing you for the press. You're admonished. We should throw him the hell out of here. Get out of here, Donald. Now, of course, he was uh, only kidding. Um, you, you see Trump continuing even if Hillary backs off? Steve, this is important. And without endorsing him for Freedom Watch, let me say personally here, and I haven't decided who yet to vote for, but I believe that Donald Trump is probably the only one that can take Hillary Clinton out, figuratively speaking. You're going to have to go for her jugular. You're going to have to totally destroy her. Uh, it's kind of like a, uh, a vampire. If you don't drive the stake through the heart, it's going to come back. It's going to well, wind he, up he may, he may be waiting on that, you know, on that front, uh, and his PACs might be waiting until a general election. I want, I, you to hear, so. I want you to hear one more. Chris Matthews with Hillary yesterday. Listen to this. What's the difference between a socialist and a Democrat? Well, is you that a question you want to answer, or would you rather not? Politically? Well, uh, you know, I, you'd have to ask. Well, see, I'm you'd asking you. You're well, a Democrat. He's a socialist. Do you, would you like somebody to call you a socialist? I wouldn't like somebody calling well, me a socialist. But I'm, I'm not one. Okay, I well, mean, what's I'm, the difference between a socialist one. and a Democrat? Last well, question. I can tell you what I am. I am a progressive oh. Democrat. I'm a progressive How's Democrat that different than a socialist? who likes to get things done and who believes that okay. we are better off in this okay. country when we're trying to solve problems together, getting people right. to work together. All right. He, he also went on to say, I asked Debbie Wasserman Schultz, and she wouldn't answer the question either. Um, obfuscate, obfuscate, you know, detract, deflect. That's, that's what she does. She didn't answer that question at all. Well, you know what, uh, Steve? She's not a socialist. What she is is someone who's a criminal, to be blunt. 
pay her enough money, put money into the machine, as Johnny Chung testified to in the 1990s, my client put $50,000 into the turnstile at the White House, and you can get what you want. So Hillary is a socialist one day, she's a progressive the next day, she might even feign being somewhat conservative the day after that. If you pay her enough money, she'll be whatever you want. All she'll right, be. Larry, Happy New Year. Thanks for joining us uh, <clears throat> as this story continues to develop. Larry Clayman, Thank ladies you. and gentlemen. Uh, up next, uh, I think you'll find the Gimme Five to be most interesting, as always, but maybe especially interesting, I should say. Uh, you heard Obama yesterday say there's no slippery slope on him taking guns away. Uh, what do we have to go on? His past promises. Don't miss it.